our three Colorado players will be K.J. Simpson, Tristan Da Silva, and Eddie Lampkin, Jr. And Colorado is on its way. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Way to go, Eddie. You're a stud, man. Just appreciate that. Hey, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I ain't been right here in a minute. <laughs> Coach Cup? Just threw it on the thing. As soon as Coach gets here, we'll yeah, start. Boy, I had 33. Right. Oh, my water. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's me. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. Bro, that was calling something. Chill out, coach. All right, we are joined by the Colorado Buffaloes, and the Coach Boyle will make an opening statement, and then we'll go to questions for anybody that's up here on the dais. So, Coach? Well, God, <laughs> can't ask for much more out of a game in March than, than the one you just saw. I mean, these guys, the way they battled, I thought, I thought both teams battled. I mean, hats off to Florida. They played well. And, uh, but man, to show the poise and composure that we, we did down the stretch when they, they made the run back at us, uh, it was a tough, tough game. And uh, I, I thought to myself at halftime, if we don't start guarding better, uh, midway through the second half, if we don't start guarding better, we got to score 100 to win tonight. And we needed 102. Actually, only needed 101, but we got 102. So just enough at the end, great execution, great play by KJ. Every one of our players that played made plays. Um, bench was great. Uh, just a hell of a game in March. What, what else can you say? All right, questions, please. Raise your hand. State your name and affiliation, and we'll right here. Jesse Temple, The Athletic. KJ, can you take us through the last play and how that sequence unfolded? Question for KJ. Yeah, um, I mean, we always, you know, go through preparation, time and score uh, situations like that in practice. And um, it was just another one of those times where we had to execute. Obviously, we, it was a play that was set up. It was multiple actions out of it. Happened to break free and uh, was looking to just drive, create something, whatever was the best play. And uh, noticed the defender got a little bit off balance. And, you know, that's a shot I shoot a bunch of times. And, you know, cred credit to, you know, my teammates. And, you know, Cody threw me a great pass that was able to guide me and lead me in that direction and just stepping up and hitting the, hitting the shot. Question right here. Ben Baby with ESPN. Uh, Tad, walk us through kind of what happened there at the end of the second half. Uh, you know, what kind of enabled them to get back into it, and, and what, did you, what were you all able – what did you say to them into that timeout uh, going into that last possession? Well, look, I mean, we, were, we went with a small lineup just because we knew they were going to try to get threes and, and really put pressure off, you know, off on us off the dribble. And we, we didn't do a great job down the stretch. Now, again, you got to credit Florida, and they drew some fouls. Um, that was – look, that was a – that was a tough game to officiate. I mean, there was, uh, we were going downhill, they were going downhill. I mean, it was, it really was. So, um, but, but I thought we didn't do a great job of guarding them off the bounce. They got some and ones. We wanted to take away threes. That's one of the reasons we went small so we could switch everything. But, um, you know, they, they kept coming and we, we, weren't, we weren't great. Had one big turnover there in the press offense, but our guys kept their composure. In terms of the last play, last time out, like KJ said, we, we, we go through those plays. Um, you know, we don't always need them, but we have to have them in your bag when you're ready. And that was a play where we try to get him an ISO drive with six seconds to go with Eddie at the rim to clean things up. And, uh, and then Tr Tristan and Javon, you know, got two man action up top. So if that's not there, there's the next option. And, and have Cody take it out that made that read because he could have easily. KJ wasn't originally open, and then he came back to him. So credit to him, like like KJ said. So all, all five guys got to do their job in those in those situations, and they all did. Right here, please. Steven Johnson, Fort Worth Star Telegram. Question for Eddie. Um, Eddie went through a lot last year with your family, ex from TCU. How special is this moment being back here in the NCAA tournament, scoring 21 points, one win away from the Sweet 16 for you? Uh, it feels good. I was blessed to find a somewhere I can call home real quick. I told Coach and KJ, me and KJ have been having a relationship for the last two years, and I was telling them I'd love to play with you one day. And that was just, at the beginning of the season, I just told them that. And then 
when I got in the portal, I hit up coach and he was like, I love to have you. And now look where we at. And I'm just feel I'm just so blessed to be in this position. And we got to keep winning. We ain't satisfied yet. Right, right here. Hi, Ryland Scholes with Ralph Report. Under Tad, you guys have had, you've built kind of a legacy of producing great point guards with guys like Spencer and McKinley and Derek. And now KJ, after that buzzer beater, you know, you kind of cement yourself on that Mount Rushmore of Colorado point guards. What does that mean to you? Um, first of all, I appreciate the compliment. Uh, that's, I mean, that's, that's just, that's real special. You know, obviously I'm grateful to be here, you know, uh, given, you know, that recruiting process and everything, you know, I have in Colorado to call home, like Eddie said, you know, it's real special. Been here for three years and, you know, having to fill tough roles and tough shoes, you know, with previous guards that have been excellent under Coach Boyle. And uh, credit to those guys, you know, they reach back out and they're just great advisors and great role models for me and um, always give me advice and have helped me, you know, be in this position. But I feel like ultimately, you know, I just I'm so grateful to be around this team. You know, my team is the reason that I have so much success. You know, they find me when I'm open. I mean, they always encourage me when I have off games. Um, so just to be in the conversation with those guys that you named, um, it's just real special and I'm thankful. We're gonna go right here and then we'll come to you, Pat. Hey, hey Tad, right. you guys are on quite a hot streak. Jake Shapiro from Denver Sports. Tad, you guys are on quite a hot streak here down the stretch and uh, you're showing a level of basketball where you continue to fight in games. What kind of changed midway through the season, the last 10 games, where you guys kind of turned that round mentality-wise, where you continue to just bring that level up, even in those down moments? I don't know, Jake. You know, it's a, it's a long season. And, and the one thing as a coach, you know, when you've done it uh, for 30 years, like I have as an assistant or a head coach, is especially sometimes at, at the level we play in the Pac-12, a Power Five conference, you know, so much scrutiny is given to the November games and December games, and that's just part of it. But you can't lose sight of the fact that you just have to keep concentrating on getting better and better and better. And sometimes you can put so much pressure on those games. And maybe as a coach, I put too much pressure on them. I don't know. But I, I, I do know this. We kept talking about, guys, we got to keep getting better. And to these guys' credit, that's what they did, and, and, and I've known in practice that we've had a very competitive group all year. I've seen it, you know, every single day. These guys are what I call everyday guys. They come to the gym to try to get better. And, uh, you know, looking back, you know, that UCLA game in Pauley where we lost a really tough game was, uh, was a heartbreaker. These guys were down. They felt like their backs were against the wall, and they came out fighting two nights later against SC and won a double overtime game on the road against the really talented team. And that gave us some confidence. It gave us a little spark. And we've, uh, we've just been on a roll ever since. Right here, Pat. Pat Forty from Sports Illustrated for Eddie and for Tad. You've, you've played a lot of college basketball. You've coached a lot of college basketball. What was 102 to 100 in an elimination game like? Eddie, we'll start with you. Uh, <clears throat> I would just say, I'm used to playing fast, so it was like I just felt comfortable. When I was at TCU, we was the number one transition team every year. I was there myself my freshman year, so a high-scoring game is is really just another game to me. And we didn't have that many in the last couple games because we've been playing a lot in the half court. But coach told us they was gonna try to outscore us, and we had to defend, and that's what we did. Coach. Yeah, look, I mean, we we play at a mile high, you know. And uh, so we always want to play fast. We love to get out and run. And uh, uh, we're a good transition team when we get stops. Unfortunately, tonight we were taking the ball out of the net a lot, which is a little bit more difficult. But we still want to push the pace. And Florida did the same thing. So uh, we anticipated a game like this. But the, the one thing about these games, you better keep scoring the ball. <laughs> you better keep scoring it. You better be efficient. I haven't had a chance to really look at our second half. I know in the first half, we shot 60% from the field. We had 14 assists on 17 baskets. And you go in the locker room like that, you expect to be up 10 or 15. And it's a tie score because we couldn't stop them. So um, just got to keep scoring <laughs> in games like you got to, it's the bottom line. I mean, it's not what we want to talk about and do, but that's what we had to do tonight to win. We did. We're going to go right here. Yeah, a question for Coach Boyle. Along that point, Walter Clayton in particular, I think he had. 16 of the last points, 33. Yeah. What made him a particularly kind of tough cover all night for you guys? Well, they, they run good action for him. 
Um, he's a really, he's got a quick release. He's got great balance in his shot. I mean, he's, he's one of those guys that's better in person than when you watch him on film. He's a good player. And uh, I thought, you know, KJ made some, I thought he was right there a lot of times. We were right there a lot. He just made some tough shots. That last three at the end, I don't think it was bad defense. It was just, you know, he came down and raised, and he, he's a good player. And, you know, you get into this tournament, the deeper you get in, you're going to be playing against better teams and better players. And, and Florida, you can see why they had a lot of success this year. But um, our, guys, our guys battled their tails off. This, this team knows how to win in different ways. And we just proved that over the last two games. Now, I don't know anything about Marquette and what we got in front of us. We'll, we'll figure that out tonight. Um, but whatever it is, we'll, we'll be able to compete because this is a competitive group. And, and uh, uh, we're, we're happy to be moving on. We're going to right here. Scott Proctor to Colorado and congrats on the win, y'all. Eddie, uh, man, how did those chants from the fans, Eddie, man, how does it feel hearing that? And do you feel like you were you were brought to Colorado for moments for games like this, like today? Uh, yeah, for sure. God put me here for a reason, but I'm used to that. I don't even hear it half the time now. I just, I just get going and I can make one layup, ten layups. They showing support, and that's shout out to Buff Nation. They showing us love, and that's all you can ask for at the end of the day. Right, right here. For the players, Pat Rooney from the Boulder Daily Camera. Um, what is it? Tad just alluded to this, yeah. but what does it say about your group that you can win that kind of rugged battle that you did a couple days ago, and turn around and win a game like this, Tristan? Uh, yeah, we're a really tight group. Uh, we love playing with each other. We love hanging out around each other. Um, you know, we, as I said, we're a really tight group. We love each other. Um, you know, we, we fight out, out there for each other. So I feel like it shows on the court, you know, the, the hustle plays, the, the, the extra efforts, um, playing together, moving the ball, um, and we trust each other. I've been, I've been talking about trust a lot um, these past couple weeks, and, you know, that's what it ultimately comes down to. KJ, you want? Um, yeah, you know, credit to the teams we've played against. You know, everybody around this time of year is, you know, is difficult in their own way, and they all have their strengths. And uh, you know, it's just tough, rugged teams. Uh, great players on both sides. Um, you know, in Boise State, and then obviously, you know, playing Florida. I mean, couldn't credit you know Zion and Walter enough. You know, those are great guards to, up to go up against, and have nothing but respect for them. But ultimately, you know. We've shown that we can compete, you know, with any team in the country. And uh, something that, that's never questionable within this team is our fight. And we're going to keep fighting until the end. And, um, you know, we would not like to, you know, be in those type of situations. But, um, you know, we're more than prepared, you know, to be ready for whatever happens with this group. Got time for a couple more right here. Question for Coach. I'm just curious, what has Eddie brought to your program as both a player and a person? I'm glad you asked that. He's brought unbelievable toughness, uh, uh, a spirit, a competitive spirit, um, energy. Uh, he's brought so much to this team. Uh, toughness. Um, our guys believe in him. He believes in them. It's been, you know, like he said, it's you, you get somebody for just one year that kind of has to fit in with guys like Tristan and KJ, who've been here for three and four years. He he fit in like a glove. So he's unselfish. He's a fast pass first big. And my man was five for five from the foul line tonight. And to see him put in the work and see him succeed, because that's something he struggled with in the past. But you know, I don't, I don't even think about him missing free throws. I expect him to go in now, and I think he does too. But I'm really, really proud of him. Appreciate that, Coach. Last question right here. Hey, Tristan, you, you've heard the coaching staff and the, the program preach fundamentals of defense and rebounding over and over. This was the first tournament game in 20 years where both teams scored over 100 points. Um, for you guys to win a game like that, what does that say about your team and the ability to score the basketball? Uh, yeah, I mean, as Coach said, you know, this, this group kind of figured out different ways to, to win games. Um, you know, this time it was, you know, kind of outscoring the opponent. Um, we, we, we would like to not be in situations like that because um, we pride ourselves on, on defense and rebounding. Um, you know, and as I said, we just we just figured out different ways. We got really talented guys on this team, um, and once again, we we got the ultimate trust in each other. Thank you, guys. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Appreciate it.